So, Tom, you founded Clocker Copper. I did. Uh, what made you want to start your own opera company? Um, so it started off uh, with a, a project I was doing as part of my uh, degree. Basically, I wanted to look at fringe operas uh, growing in London, and there seems to be there's over 50 that have sprung up in the last 15, 20 years. Um, and as part of that investigation, I also wanted to set up my own and kind of compare how different companies work. Um, so you are so you trained as a singer. Yes. Yes. And um, what made you want to make the move from kind of straight singing to like doing your own thing? Um, there were lots of different reasons. Um, there are certain strains on a singer uh, in terms of lifestyle and things that I just decided that wasn't the route that I wanted to go down. But having worked with other students with the student opera company, I actually started to find that I was really enjoying that, um, and that made me want to kind of follow that as. Uh, possible career path. Um, so how do you find performing versus directing? Um, it's very different. It's also useful because as a director, you know, having been performing, you have that insight. And especially when you're working uh, with opera singers, there's a very specific, it's a very specific set of skills um, to be able to sing in an opera. And knowing that and being able to approach singers with that knowledge, it makes the whole process just easier because you understand where they're coming from. Yeah, totally. Um, okay, so what are your plans for the future with Copper um, So we've started off doing relatively small venues um, and what I'd like to do is now start experimenting in theatre spaces because up until now we basically we go into any number of spaces and they're normally sort of public spaces such as churches um, and a lot of national heritage sites like this one. Um, and I'd like to start moving into theatre spaces and start introducing things like lighting um, into the mix and then maybe possibly adding orchestra or at least a, a larger number of musicians into the mix. Um, are you going to take this particular show any further? Um, I am currently looking at maybe entering it into it. There's a number of festivals that go on in London um, that are to do with showcasing interesting interpretations of different works and I think because this piece isn't done a huge amount um, and it's certainly not done in English, uh, it's done in English even less. Um, so did you translate the, all the songs? I did, yes, yeah. I translated the piece, it took me around about four months. Um, uh, I guess it was, I was approached... French? Yes, yeah, so it's, the original was in French. Um, I used to live in France uh, when I was much younger, so I sort of already had a handle on kind of, you know, what, how that works. Um, but the interesting thing is then, not only the French have a completely different, you know, personality to them and a different sense of humour, and then also the piece was written um, in the late 19th century, so what they find funny and what we find funny are very different. So there's always this sort of compromise of kind of trying to come up with something that people will want to watch in the 21st century and that was tricky but also a lot of fun.